The death of Michael Jackson shocked the world, especially those who knew and had worked with him. My guest today on Hard Talk is Motown legend Lamont Dozier, one of the songwriting trio behind many of Motown's greatest hits. Amidst the outpouring of grief, who or what does he think is responsible for Jackson's untimely death? Lamont Dozier, welcome to Hard Talk. Thank you very much. Now, you knew Michael Jackson ever since he was a kid. How did you feel when you heard the news yes, about his death? Well, I was really grief stricken. It was uh, quite a surprise. It was like being caught off guard uh, with some bad news you just never want to hear. Um, it was something sudden and penetrating and uh, just uh, uh, awful. Uh, Michael, uh, he and I go back a long ways to uh, when he was a child, uh, when I first met him. But uh, he was, um, uh, I don't know, I, there's so many different things you can say mm -hmm. about Michael. Uh, he was an innovator. Sure. And uh, he uh brought to us and gave to us uh, a lot of uh, things that uh, uh, we will be missing for a long time. Lamont Josia, you said that it came as a surprise to you. Was it really a surprise when so many people, and even he admitted that he was a heavy user of prescription drugs? The family lawyer, Brian Oxman, said that he was addicted to prescription drugs. So should it really have come as such a surprise to you, his untimely death? You know, it's, it's just really strange because um, I was never privy to any of those things that uh, I'm hearing now. It's quite a surprise to me because Michael and I, when we were together, when we talked uh, mostly about business uh, and uh, the, the nature of the business and where it was going, this was quite a shock to me because... Uh, I just didn't feel that he was that type of guy. So it was a, a, a secret kept from me, uh, an aside that maybe he didn't want me to see. Oh, really? A lot it of wasn't other people as well. But it wasn't common knowledge then, because I mean, obviously, newspaper reports had been very full of this kind of story for quite some time. You're saying it wasn't common knowledge there in L.A. No, it was. No, it was not a common knowledge at all. Uh, uh, it was something that he kept to himself and a few other people, mm -hmm. maybe the doctors uh, that uh, he had sp uh, prescribed certain things. I couldn't say, uh, but okay. it was something that he kept well hidden. Um, uh, and I don't, know, I don't know firsthand about any of that. Okay. I mean, when you look at the pictures of Michael Jackson, even as a, a young boy, you knew him when he was small also. Do you think there was a kind of, there was a vulnerable air about him? I mean, subsequently we knew about the abuse allegations he made against his father, Joe Jackson. Do you think in a sense there was always a slightly tragic air about Michael Jackson? Oh, yes. I mean, you know, uh, the way he was brought up it, under uh, uh, a strict disciplinarian and uh, it was something that, uh, uh, I mean, it's, it's weird, but uh, I was sort of brought up the same way. Uh, by a strict disciplinarian uh, uh, who who ruled what sort of uh, 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 iron fist in a, in a sort of a way, but it was uh, to uh, I, but that was the way he was brought up. So uh, I, I understand uh, uh, what he was going through in that situation. Just as the media followed his life in minute detail, uh, and now, obviously, they are covering his death in great deal of detail also, do you think he really paid a very high price for the considerable fame he had? Oh, absolutely. It was uh, something he enjoyed immensely, but uh, when, you, when you have to deal with uh, no privacy, and, and being uh, 
constantly accosted by people uh, who either meant well or meant you no good at all. Uh, being surrounded with that type of uh, with that type of atmosphere is is heavy, and it's 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 uh, it weighs on your mind as well as your body and your spirit. But why do you think it affected him so much? Because I mean, there are lots of other big stars at Motown as well. I mean, you had Smokey Robinson, you had the Supremes. There are other big stars there too. Yeah. Well, you know. Um, Michael was very sensitive, very vulnerable, and, and very timid in a way. Uh, and he kept his, his feelings tucked in. And um, he, he just felt like, a, what can I call him, a, a, a man-child uh, that a lot of people say that he was. He was a, a sort of a, a pure soul in a, in a way, mm -hmm. a, a young soul. And uh, but at the same time, uh, a person that you felt had uh, tremendous wisdom as if he had been here before. When you saw him on stage, all of a sudden uh, he looked like a professional, a consummate uh, a professional that had been here before uh, and could show you things and bring to mind some things that you ordinarily wouldn't have thought of. But, uh, what it was very... She was going to say, yes. what made him such a big star in your view? Because you were at Motown for many years, writing hit after hit with the brothers Holland, Brian and Eddie, for the Supremes right. and the Temptations, the Four Tops. But what made Michael Jackson such a star? What was special about him? You know, he was driven, first of all, and he had a work ethic that was su superior to most people. A lot of people... Uh, don't want to work that hard. Michael insists on working that hard. Uh, his work ethic was, uh, oh, just tremendous. Somebody that would rehearse over and over and over and until he felt satisfied with himself. But at the same time, he never was satisfied. And, and like I am and most uh, uh, people that have been in this business for a long time, you're, you're constantly trying to improve yourself, trying to make yourself better. Do you think and that's he was, what he was constantly always doing. And if he drove himself so hard, yes. do you think he was burnt out? Because, I mean, he hadn't had a hit in the United Kingdom or the U.S. for about 12, 15 years. He'd not given any live concerts for 10 years. I mean, the best was really behind him. Well, you know, he was constantly reaching out and looking for new, different, uh, different avenues of expression, if you will. I mean, he was always looking for... He was working with... Uh, uh, hip hoppers uh, uh, and, and trying to find a new voice, a new uh, direction for himself. He was always looking, he was trying to uh, look for, like I said, different types of expression to bring back, uh, to uh, insert into his music. Do you think that those around him perhaps should have taken better care of him? I mean, even now we're hearing newspaper reports that as he was rehearsing for this, these 50 concerts coming up in London, that um, he was dripping in sweat and in absolute pain after he had rehearsed some of the numbers. I mean, did he push himself too far? And those around him, did they allow him to push himself too far? You know, when Michael wanted to do something, uh, it's like, uh, how do you protect the person from himself? You know, uh, when he's brought up this way with, with this determination to win, uh, you can't tell a person with that type of uh, attitude and, and, and drive uh, what he should do or what he should not do. Uh, and, and that's a, it's a very hard thing to do. And, and, and people around him, I'm sure, made comments and, and, and said, Michael, why don't you do this and that? But it still wouldn't have mattered. Michael was going to do what he wanted to do because, uh, you know, he, he knew what he wanted to do for himself and but what he, he needed to do to push himself.